I'm here with Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Durant. Alexander, let's talk about uh, Viktor Orban's meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump in the Oval Office, in the White House. And let me, uh, I did a Google search before uh, we did this video, and I've pulled up the first three articles um, in this search. I did a search Orban Trump. And the first article is from The Guardian with the title, Trump praises Hungary's far-right leader, Orban. The second one is from NPR with the title, Trump hosts hard-right Hungarian leader, Viktor Orban, at the White House. And the third one is from CNN. Trump welcomes Hungary's far-right nationalist prime minister. What do you make of these three titles? from Guardian, NPR, and CNN. Oh, well, I mean, they're terrible titles and they're appalling. I mean, they, what they do yet again is they try to label Orban as some sort of... Well, we say, when, they, when they use words like far right, what they really mean is crypto-fascist or indeed fascist. I mean, that's what they're really talking about, Orban. Orban is the democratically elected prime minister of Hungary. He has won repeated elections. He has turned Hungary round. Hungary is a prosperous, democratic country. At a time when he took over Hungary, it was in deep crisis, and he turned it round. He is very popular in Hungary. The reason they called him far right is because he opposes European integration. I mean, further European integration within the EU, which sets him against the integrationist uh, uh, um, um, centre in Brussels and Paris and Frankfurt and Berlin. He is also somebody who believes in good relations with Russia, which again is unacceptable to the neoliberals. And last but not least, he is someone who is very, very critical of immigration and has tried to keep Hungary uh, essentially Hungarian. Um, if, uh, so he is a sovereigntist, uh, a, a patriot, a person who believes that Hungary should have an independent foreign policy. And for that reason, he's called far right. I mean, I think that's a caricature. Let's also not forget that Orban has uh, squared off directly with uh, George Soros. And yeah. so he's pretty much in the crosshairs of the globalists and the elitists and, and all these crazies. Indeed, because he squared off against uh, uh, George Soros, they also called him an anti-Semite, which, uh, despite the fact that Orban is a very, very good friend of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and tends to support Israel. So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's this labelling which really annoys me uh, and which is so inaccurate and so wrong. Now, you can criticize Orban's policies, but please don't label him in this way. All right, let me read you um, a passage from the NPR article, and you can comment on it. President Trump hosted Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban at the White House on Monday, a gesture the past two U.S. presidents avoided granting to the hard-right European leader. Quote, people have a lot of respect for this prime minister, Trump said in a photo op in the Oval Office before their meeting. Trump went on to warmly praise the Hungarian leader. He's a respected man, and I know he's a tough man, but he's a respected man, and he's done the right thing, according to many people, on immigration, end quote. What do you make of uh, Trump's words towards Viktor Orban? Well, I, I, I think what, what Trump says, I mean, when he says that Orban is a very respected leader, he, Orban is a very respected leader in his own country, and he is a very respected leader in Eastern and Southern Europe. He's got a very close friendship now with uh, Salvini in Italy. He works quite closely with Kurz of Austria, and he's very, very friendly with Kaczynski of Poland. So he does, he is respected. He's not respected, as I said, by the uh, 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 neoliberal globalist elite, which is running the EU. But that is not to say that he's not widely respected by other people. Now, I think what is incensed a lot of these commentators is that Angela Merkel 
and the uh, um, centrist parties that dominate the European Parliament have just ejected Viktor Orban's party from the European People's Party. This is the block of centre-right parties that uh, bring together parties like the German CDU in the European Parliament. Fidesz, Orban's party, was part of that bloc. They've, it's now been pushed out of it because, of course, Orban is an opponent of uh, the integrationist policies that the e e European People's Party, led by Merkel and Weber and all these other people, have been following. And um, as a result of that, He's been called a far rightist. And uh, we should see through these labels. As I said, they don't mean anything, actually. All they actually mean is this is someone that the uh, centrists in charge of the EU, the integrationists, I should call them, the globalists, don't like. Recently, we did a video about how Nigel Farage is being called it by, you know, uh, outlets like The Guardian, an anti-Semite, even though he gave interviews to Alex Jones, which never mentioned Jews, Israel or Zionism or had anything to do with that. And it's the same with Orban. He's just being labelled because he pursues policies on behalf of Hungary, which are popular in Hungary, of which he is the democratically elected prime minister, which some people don't like. And that's all there is to it. Mm. Salvini, Farage, Le Pen, Orban. We have EU parliament elections coming up in a little over a week. What is the influence of Orban as uh, these elections are about to take place and we see this movement of leaders who are, who do believe in the sovereign nation state? I think the thing about Orban is that um, this, despite the fact that Hungary is a small country, he has managed somehow to capture the imagination and to project uh, the image of a strong leader who has become the leader of the alternative to the integrationists at the center. So um, Orban is now um, largely accepted um, as the leader of the non of the anti-integrationist group. Um, I think Salvini will probably gradually also assume such a role. But it's important to remember that Salvini is not the prime minister of Italy. So he doesn't have an analogous state position to the one Orban has. And I think that's why Orban is becoming so uh, um, unpopular with some people and has been criticized in this way. Because, of course, with the European elections coming, and with the anti-integrationist parties, the anti-globalist parties all over Europe expected to do well, including Nigel Farage's Brexit party in Britain, it is overwhelmingly likely that the group that Orban now leads, effectively leads, is going to get much stronger. Yeah, Orban is, is very much like Farage, a, a larger-than-life type of, type of politician that has enacted... A lot of change, and I think the the elitists and the globalists in Brussels, they never expected this coming out of a, a country like Hungary or Orban. That that this this country and this leader would have such an influence as to as the, to to move Europe into a different direction than what these elitists and these globalists wanted, which was full integration and control of the people. And Orban is in the other direction. He believes in the nation state. In, in the freedom of the people and, and in the freedom of the country to protect its culture, its history, its, its values, etc. I agree with that. I entirely agree with that. And I, I, I think that we must be very clear about something, about people like Orban and Salvini and the rest. These people are real politicians. Farage is a real politician. They are the kind of politicians I can remember uh, seeing in Europe in, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, people, you know, people like Margaret Thatcher in Britain, people like uh, uh, um, um, Helmut Schmidt and uh, uh, um, and Willy Brandt in Germany. Um, if I, my memory goes even back even further, I mean, I can just about remember General de Gaulle in France. These are real politicians. What we are increasingly seeing across Europe are technicians 
people who are not real politicians. They do not represent the views of the people that they are supposed to leave. They are there to carry out the instructions of the globalist center in Frankfurt and Berlin and Brussels and of course Washington. And so we're getting people like Theresa May and Angela Merkel and indeed Macron. Emmanuel Macron and all those sort of people. And of course, compare them with real politicians, people like Orban and Macron, they can talk to people and move a crowd or indeed Farage and Donald Trump in Britain and the United States, and you see the difference. And it's because these people are populists, in other words, what well, it's because these people have this real connection with ordinary people, with real people, that's why they're being called populists. Yeah, there's a lot of times the media puts a stigma on the word populism and populist, yeah. but I mean, in essence, it's just, you know, a person who does connect exactly. the, that's uh, what it is. The, the heartland of any country. That's exactly right. That's all it is. I mean, it, 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 in itself, it's a completely meaningless phrase. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything. And it, 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 when it's used, it tells us an awful lot more about the people who use it and the profoundly anti-democratic and authoritarian instincts and opinions that they have than it does about the people they're attacking. Well said, Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Durant shop. Pick up a t-shirt. Help support the Durant. Donate to us on PayPal and Patreon as well. The links are in the description box down below. And you can get a copy of this video in audio format. Follow us on iTunes and on SoundCloud as well. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, the Duran underscore com. And don't forget to download the Blank Chat app and subscribe to our channel there as well. And go to the Duran com and see all the articles that we are linking up to every day. Alexander McCurse, editor in chief of the Duran. Thank you once again. Until next time, everybody. Take care.